Worried about Moore's Law ending? Let me introduce you to quantum computing. You may have heard the news that Google's AI lab recently announced it had developed a quantum computer capable of solving a certain type of mathematical problem over 100 million times faster than a single core processor. So what actually is a quantum computer? Well, it's a computer that takes advantage of the weird physics of quantum mechanics. At that level, things behave differently than you would expect on a classic macro level. Classic computing relies on bits, ones or zeros. Quantum computing relies on qubits. We're talking about zeros and ones at the same time. By bundling these together and applying them to something called a quantum gate, you can solve problems in a massive parallel process instead of in sequence. And that saves a huge amount of time. So, does this mean we're all going to have these super mega powerful computers in a year's time? Not quite. Quantum computers are very special beasts. For one thing, Google's quantum computer has a processor that's lowered down to a temperature that's just above absolute zero, and you're not gonna find that in your average laptop. For another, they're really only good for certain types of problems, like optimization problems. The classic example is the traveling salesman. You've got a salesman who has to go to various cities, and you wanna figure out the most efficient route. But every time you add another city, the problem gets more complex. If you were to feed this to a classical computer using a straightforward algorithm, it would go through every single possible option and then compare all the results at the end, which could take centuries, and by that time, your traveling salesman has ceased to be. But the quantum computer uses a different methodology called quantum annealing. Now, the term annealing refers to how metals cool down. When they're hot, molecules are bouncing all over the place. But as the metal cools down, the molecules settle into low energy states. Quantum annealing does the same thing, but on a quantum level. It basically uses quantum mechanics to determine the lowest energy state, and that's your answer. It's whichever solution uses the least amount of energy. That means it's the most efficient or cheapest in the case of the traveling salesman. All right, so Google's computer was able to solve this optimization problem much faster than a classical computer. So case is closed, right? Not quite. To be fair, the classical computer was using an algorithm called simulated annealing. And people have pointed out that if it had used a different algorithm, it may have performed as well or better than the quantum computer. But this does put us one step closer to true quantum computing, and that could really transform our world in many ways. For example, cybersecurity. But if you want to learn more about that, we did a full episode of Forward Thinking on it, so you should check that out. Now this leads me to a question for all of you out there. What sort of futuristic computing gets you really excited? Is it quantum computing or DNA computing or something else? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button and don't forget to join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to this channel. Then check out these other amazing videos right over here.